Hey guys, it's Karen. Welcome back to Little Art Talks. Remember back in 2010, there was this huge controversy over Everybody Draw Mohammed Day. Now, it all started when the American animated television show South Park did an episode where they portrayed a character as the Holy Prophet Mohammed. The artist received death threats and the show's distributor, Comedy Central, self-censored the episode. In response, Molly Norris drew a poster-like cartoon intended as a satirical comment on the event and in protest of censorship. In it was various anthropomorphized objects that each claimed to be the likeness of Muhammad. At the top is written, We hereby deem May 20th, 2010, as the first Everybody Draw Muhammad Day. From there, it kind of blew up and went viral. Now, instead of talking about who's right or wrong or anything like that, I want to talk about instead why this is such a big deal. Why were people so offended by this cartoon and these drawings of Muhammad? Now, while I'm sure anyone who is religious would be offended if their holy prophet was portrayed as the butt of a joke, there's also the fact that Islam comes from a tradition of aniconism. What is that and what does it mean? Let's talk about it. Aniconism is the opposition to the use of icons or visual images to depict living creatures or religious figures. It's the absence of material representations of the natural and supernatural world. There's lots of different examples that can range from only God and deities to saint characters, all living beings, and even everything that exists. This is particularly relevant to Jewish, Islamic, and Byzantine artistic traditions. This avoidance is primarily an attempt to avoid idolatry. Idolatry is the worship of an idol or physical object as a representation of God. The specifics in terms of what constitutes as idolatry can vary between religions and time periods, but to put it simply, it's the idea that God, or deities, saint characters, living beings, etc., shouldn't be or can't be depicted or represented by any object. The first commandment states, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. You shall not adore them nor serve them. In Judaism, the portrayal of Yahweh in any kind of human or concrete form is absolutely forbidden. Especially large and freestanding religious sculpture is avoided, but two-dimensional images, especially ones that are pretty small, like book illustrations, are acceptable. In Islamic culture, the Quran does not explicitly prohibit the depiction of human beings, but it does condemn idolatry. Up until the first century CE, the Buddha was only represented through symbols. In the Byzantine Empire during the iconoclastic controversy, the use of religious images or icons was banned. Aniconism leads to a restriction in the type of art that's made and also art that people in that society can make, but also leads to an interesting development of art that is not figural representations. For example, Islamic art has a rich tradition of Islamic geometric patterns, calligraphy, and the barely representational foliage patterns of the arabesque. There's also the situation in which people enforce aniconism with iconoclasm, the physical destruction of imagery. In the Byzantine iconoclastic controversy, the ban was accompanied by widespread destruction of images as well as the persecution of the supporters of the veneration of images. I'll talk more about that in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Be sure to come back for the next video on iconoclasm. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.